Hi and welcome. I'm Steve Johnson, Chief Investment Officer at Forager Funds, and I'm here recording another one of our work from home videos. And today I'm joined by Australian Fund Senior Analyst, Alex Shevelev. Hey Alex, how are you? Hi Steve, hi everyone. How's your working from home situation going? You've got a, a young child and another one on the way and a very busy wife. How are That's you holding right. up? That's right. So it's, um, I think much like everyone has been a bit of disruption, but uh, we're getting through it, sitting at the same uh, table in our living room and um, trying to get work done, the both of us. Now, we've just sent out the, uh, the latest quarterly report and it was a pretty rough quarter uh, for the Australian Fund on the back of what's been a rough few years. We tried to stick to the stock specifics there and, and made the, the case that even the stocks in our portfolio that weren't dramatically affected by what's happening in the economy have been wallop share price wise and that was perhaps unjustified. I've just finished reading a lot of other fund managers quarterly reports. They're trying to make the same argument about all of their stocks. So maybe, maybe it all needs to be taken with a grain of salt. But we have had a couple of announcements over the past few weeks that are along similar lines, uh, that there is progress being made at our business, at the businesses that we own. A big and important one this morning from Thorn Group, the share price is up about 50% as we sit here and talk today. It is still down a long way over the past 12 months, but tell us what's happened there. So Thorn is one that I think we've uh, been talking about for quite some time. We featured in a couple of quarterlies and unfortunately that uh, oftentimes starts off with Thorn being a thorn in our side. And uh, so it continued during the COVID drawdown as well. It uh, was one where the share price had been walloped. The company came out and suggested that uh, the level of bad debts in its equipment finance business was going to be uh, worse than they had originally anticipated. And the share price fell from 20 cents to closer to 4 cents. Now, one of the things that we had been trying to do with this company over some time is encourage the business to reconsider the investment in the radio rentals component, which is uh, a consumer leasing business, and seeing if that uh, book, that is the value of the assets that are tied up in that business, can somehow be unwound and some of the proceeds of that at least return to shareholders. It was pleasing to see this morning that Thorne came out with an announcement suggesting that adding to the temporary closure of all their stores uh, from COVID-19, that they'd actually be extending that into a more permanent closure. They'll continue to operate the business online through radiorentals.com.au, where a lot of the leads for their stores had already been coming from. Uh, but the good news there is that a lot of the assets that are tied up in uh, that business and a lot of the costs tied up in physically delivering those products will be unwound. Yeah, and we've got a, a business here where there's a huge amount of cost in that that physical delivery and servicing of the, the product. So uh, there's a few different scenarios here. One is that the online model is much more efficient and works better. It is undoubtedly going to be smaller than the bricks and model uh, set up. So under that scenario, it's going to shrink. Hopefully it spits out some cash and then maybe you've got a profitable business at the end there as well. Maybe you run this online business for a few years and work out that it's not economical like that either, but you have experience now in shrinking this book and, and getting it down to a size and maybe you just continue that process and, and generate more cash. To put this into context, it, it's a it's a business, you know, they said this morning, I think it was $124 million of uh, receivables in that radio rentals book at that four cent share price that you mentioned the whole market cap of this company was 12 million dollars so roughly one tenth of the size of the radio rentals book alone uh, it has an equipment finance business as well which is quite clearly going to go through a lot of troubles and we've had our frustrations that they didn't sell that last year it's really important though i think there has been a huge amount of progress being made here and it's been lost a little bit in the noise you know since september last year we've had the class action go away for the company we've got an entirely new board in there that are making steps in the right direction we've got a new management team a new ceo running the business and a new head of equipment finance as well so today's announcement is really the culmination of a lot of those steps over the past six months and good to see uh, yeah, share price up 50% doesn't mean much in the context of something that's been down 80 or 90 over the past year. But we think there's a lot more cash that can come out of that. And there's a lot of franking credits in this business. So hopefully it can come out fully franked as well. A lot more work to do that. I, you know, I like running my marathons. We're probably at the 30K mark, maybe three quarters of the way through the race. But there's a lot that can go wrong over the last 10 kilometers. So uh, really happy to see some steps in the right 
direction here, but you know, we're not taking our eyes off this for one second. Uh, another one that's been going a lot better for us and, and a business that we're less, uh, has caused us less stress in our short period of ownership is RPM Global, R-U-L is the ticker. Again, hammered through this past three months, but uh, a small announcement from them, but another one that suggests the business is not being dramatically affected by the downturn in the economy. Mm. And uh, I mean, the share price there had probably had close to halved. Uh, but it was a business that had been performing well, and it seems like it actually hasn't skipped a beat. So the company released a couple of days ago uh, an announcement suggesting that their uh, subscription uh, revenue, which is, uh, this is a mining services technology business, and they're trying to shift a lot of their perpetual clients, as well as new clients, onto a subscription model where that client pays larger annual uh, installments for the software. That is actually going as well as it was going pre-COVID and better than it was going at the beginning of the FY20 financial year. So looking at it on a, uh, on a run rate basis, the business has not skipped a beat. That is the technology component of RPM and that is by far the most valuable and the most interesting comp business in there. There may be some small impacts on some of the other components uh, that make up the RPM whole, but that software business is very valuable very recurring revenue stream and will continue, it looks like, to grow through this period and beyond. And the business continues to be on a very healthy free cash flow yield to boot. Now, you wrote something in the quarterly report that I took out because I uh, found it a bit too confusing, but you said something along the lines of this business should, should generate free cash flow this year that equates to, I think it was 6% or 7% of the current uh, enterprise value of the company roughly the, the market capitalization, but that you expect that to go up three or fourfold over the next few years. Now, we're not seeing that amount of growth at the revenue line. So what's the explanation here for the cash flow growing so much quicker? So the starting point here is that the business has quite a lot of net cash, and that has been uh, positive through this period as well. If there were any issues, the business was well, uh, was well supported by that cash balance. And that cash balance accumulates over time. At the moment, the company is not returning capital back to shareholders, although they have that option later on. Uh, and as that cash uh, accumulates on the balance sheet and as the growth on the free cash flow uh, increases, you very quickly get into a position where the enterprise value of the business relative to that free cash flow uh, becomes a, a very small number. So very high free cash flow yield to the enterprise value. Yeah, the way I think about this every time I see one of these announcements, so they're reporting uh, these numbers that are lifetime value of the, the subscription that they've had, which is sort of irrelevant, but then annual recurring revenue, which is the important piece here, that's the, the annualised amount that they're going to receive from these new contracts they're signing, but they still have enough revenue here from their legacy business to cover all of their cost base. So every single cent here that they sign in recurring revenue that comes on is going to turn up next year as profit in this business and, and free cash flow out to the shareholders. And you've actually probably got the expense line coming down because they've spent a lot of money on development over the past few years that they're saying they may not need to spend as much in future. So it, it's more, and I think this will surprise people over the, the next few years, there's, there's more upside in the profitability here, even without them writing more and more business, it's, if they can write the same amount of new business every year, the profit is going to grow very, very quickly. Okay, that's uh, a good quick catch up from you, Alex. Thanks for all your work over the past few months. I know it's been very uh, stressful and difficult time, both working from home and with what's been going on in the portfolio, but great to see some good news out and some progress at some businesses that have caused us trouble and, and some that haven't. Thank you.